Welcome to our Heritage Audio and Visual Collection. Buckle up. Jim Cousins describes driving conditions in the 1920s and 30s. But I managed to have a car. Uh, I bought a car in 1928 before I was married. And that car was a Model T Ford, a 1924 Ford Coupe. But we fixed them ourselves, you know. We put new rings in, we ground the valve ourselves, we put new rear ends and so on. Put new bands in, we did it all ourselves, so there was not not very much cost. And we didn't run them in the winter, unless there was something we had to do. We usually put them up on blocks and uh, let them stay. Or if we wanted to run them in the winter, just to drain the water out, there was no antifreeze then, only alcohol antifreeze, it wasn't very good. So we would jack up the hind wheel, put the car in gear, and then we would fill the radiator with hot water, we'd pour hot water over the manifold, we'd pull the choke and we'd crank. And we used to buy uh, some of these auto stores, spark intensifiers, little condenser things we'd put on the sparks to make the damn things fire. And usually after sweating for about an hour, it would go put, 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 got it going, and then you put it out of gear, and you lowered it off the jack. <laughs> so it, it was really a, a performance to get your car on it. Of course, there were some richer people who had Chevrolet and Buicks and all. But uh, most of us had model And then I, after that, I some fellow sold me a, a 20, I think, 26 Ford with a Ruxtell axle. It had gears on it. <laughs> you put the leg, it had extra lows. So that you could go up a hill without having to turn around and go backwards. Yeah. Did you ever have to do that? I had to do that in, in Yellowstone Park. I didn't have enough gasoline, so I had to turn around and back up the hill. Oh, I see. Because the, the, you know, the gas is low. And when you're on a hill like this, it runs out and wonder if you want to recover. So when you turn around, it runs down into the carburetor and you back up. <laughs> oh, yes. And spark coils had always got wet. Always fiddling around with those, putting new pumps on. But that was uh, part of the fun. But then, you see, the roads were dirt roads. And uh, you could travel from, uh, say, I, I traveled south of Vegreville across to Calgary one time. Well, you'd run into thunderstorms, and you'd have ten miles of road that would just grind. You'd have to grind through. You couldn't even see your way. Then you'd have some dry road. And then you'd have wet again. And then, you'd, uh, then they had gravel roads, all-weather roads, they called them. And uh, they used to get chuck roads, you know, what gravel roads were moving. And... Uh, we traveled in all weathers all right, but sometimes you'd get such mud splash on the windshield you couldn't see. And don't forget, you didn't have windshield wipers. <laughs> uh, there was a hand one that you could go like this, but most times you pulled it off the side of the road and wiped it off. And uh, I know I used to travel, uh, I used to fill up with gas about every 35 or 40 miles so that I had a chance to go and clean the windshield off. So we, didn't have, we weren't troubled with bugs on the radiator, on the windshield. Because you didn't travel fast, <laughs> <laughs> the bus got out of the way. <laughs> what was it? Did uh, many people have vehicles? Not very many. I went to Vancouver with that same car. I went around the circuit tour. Uh, I went down to Seattle and up to Vancouver and down to Portland, down to San Francisco, back through Yellowstone. With them all? Yeah, there were a lot of people that did the same thing. We chug along, you know, 30 miles, 25 miles an hour. And we stay at tourist camps that cost a dollar a night. You get sheets if you pay it down in the port. <laughs> And so, uh, and the rest of the time, for, for two bits, we, we, or 50 cents, we could uh, put our tents out and see them. And I, I started out, I, I took a six week trip. Uh, I remember the, the first day we got down as far as Bonner's Ferry from here. That was 235 miles. That was about the longest day's trip that we took. And uh, when we were in a hurry, we wouldn't make up 200 miles a day. The, uh, and we'd stop at the little towns. We'd stop at the, they all had tourist camps days. And, uh, what were they like? Uh, usually they had a kitchen with uh, stoves and things in and a place to wash and so on. Uh, I remember Pocatello, Idaho particularly because they had gas stoves and they were free. You know, you paid your 50 cents to go in and you set up your tent. You could take a shower bath. And, and I remember how hot it was in Pocatello. It was a, uh, a day something like this, you know, and it was, it was getting rather deserty. I remember I went to the uh, we came back up to Portland and went on the Oregon Trail. I've still a historian, you know, and I went over the Oregon Trail and we went back and uh, we went through Boise. And when I got through, there's a, I think there's a place called Nampa there in Idaho. And uh, I stopped there and I said to the fellow, is there any more of this 
desert. <laughs> and he looked so hurt. You know, he said, well, if you choose to call it desert, he said, we call it semi-arid country. He said, it blooms like a rose, he said, when you irrigate it. And then there'd be little sections of irrigation all along there, and there'd be a big sign up, federal uh, aid in, uh, in agriculture. I remember this was 1928. 29. I'll, I'll, be, I'll get my date right there. It's 29, just before the Depression. And it was the last trip I took. And we got into Yellowstone Park, and we had to pay. There were cabins there. Uh, we paid a dollar a night. And you know, I went back on a tour for the Chamber of Commerce in 1956. It's a good long time later. Those cabins were still there. They hadn't been changed. There was nothing in them, just a cabin with a bed and a mattress. And you put your... Uh, your blankets on it and you slept. And they were seven dollars in there. Yeah. Seven dollars. I think I just what made them worth seven dollars instead of one dollar, I don't know. But it was uh, it was after when I came back of course I had to grind the valves and uh, take up the bearings on my Model T because it was pretty worn. The bands wore out a couple of times, but I had quick change bands. So you could unfasten them. See the old ones you had to take the uh, housing off and take the, the bands out. Well, the quick change ones had a bolt on the top, so you unfastened the bolt and you slid them around, and then you put the new one underneath and fastened it in again. Unless you dropped the bolt, as I did once, and I started up the car and the bolt shot up in the air. And I caught it, so I, I didn't have to take the car apart. But touring was real fun in those days. I can remember a couple of boys from Pennsylvania. They had a, a roadster uh, car, and it was awfully hot running across the plains there boys he could pull the car on back that way. And they were driving with their feet hanging out of the window. How they would have had to stop, I don't know, but it was, <laughs> they were driving like just two feet hanging out that side, two feet hanging out. College boys on, on the tour. And we'd meet and we'd make friends and we'd agree that we'd meet at a certain time and night. We'd meet the same gang traveling, touring around. And that was, uh, oh, it's, it's changed so much now, you know, with, your, with the motels and the fact that you go six or eight hundred miles a day without hesitation and the roads are paved. They were all gravel in those days. You get a few paved roads. Uh, the only uh, crowding I ran into, I was going into Seattle on the 4th of July and then we were bumper to bumper going in. And, uh, the Model T was all right, you know, it, can, uh, it had a sort of clutch effect. You could uh, push your low gear halfway in and it would step it. The, the, the Model T was very much like the power guy. It, it, it would spin around in oil, so that uh, I didn't get over it. A lot of the other cars started to boil them. Mm -hmm. I remember one fellow had a Buick, and he was an old man, and uh, he said he didn't like going fast, so he had a cart put under his uh, accelerator so that he wouldn't go faster than 35 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's an awful lot of corduroy road in those days, not corduroy, uh, washboard, yeah. because uh, the, they, were, they were gravel roads. Some of them were, there was no uh, at all, but some of them, I remember 35 miles in, in Washington, just about your the light on. But uh, on the coast, they had a paved road right down, very narrow on two lane road. But uh, when you went down towards San Francisco, that was a real going to go along. Down there, you could go 35 miles an hour. <laughs> Uphill, of course, you went five miles an hour. But usually, you, you average about 20. You got 30 miles to the gallon. But that. Uh, that was just pre-depression. That was I had talked for three years then, and I had been wanting to. I, I had two hundred dollars. I had the car. I got the car all fixed up, and I filled it up with gas. And I think I had about one hundred and eighty-seven dollars left. And I made this trip. I don't know about four thousand miles, maybe. and uh, came back to the old Model T. Of course, <laughs> we took a chance, but then Columbus was that kind of person too.